Hi, my name is Natalie. I started gaining weight in my first pregnancy with my daughter. We were expecting twins and we lost one at 20 weeks. I had to continue carrying both children and ended the pregnancy delivering at 34 weeks. One live child and one not. It was a wonderful day and a really hard day all at the same time. Through that pregnancy, God gave me the verse Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge Him and He'll direct your path. Intellectually, I knew that I could trust Him, that I could trust His heart, but emotionally, I was grieving and I stuffed that emotion with food. I stopped weighing myself when I hit 250 pounds. I just was embarrassed and couldn't look at the scale anymore. My kids asked me to run a one mile fun run with them and I started with them, but I couldn't finish. And at that point, I knew that if I wanted to be the mom that God called me to be, I had to lose weight. I tried many diets and I ran not one, but three triathlons. So I pursued weight loss surgery and it wasn't a magic bullet, but it gave me a jump start and helped me begin the path to healthy eating. I had a great empathy for people who were overweight, specifically those who were morbidly obese. And I started working at a gym and then became a personal trainer and then a group fitness instructor. And eventually, through it all, God called me to own a gym. I'm blessed that He gave me the opportunity to share my experience and to really help people to understand and have a place where they aren't judged, but encouraged to work hard, a place where they can find encouragement in their path to eat better. God's given me a place where I can share how He walked me through down this path and helped me to lose weight. It is amazing to see how God has used my business, using every bit of my talent, my experience, my abilities, my passion, and my testimony for Him to help others. I uh, get to share with people the verse, um, letting your body be a temple to the Holy Spirit. And then just an everyday quote, if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. My name is Natalie and Jesus has transformed my life and He can redeem yours as well. Well, good evening. How's everyone doing? Good, good. Last week we began our seven week series on transformation or transformed. And we talked about transforming our spiritual health. Uh, during life group, during the, over the course of the week, we looked at habits to develop uh, spiritually healthy lives. And today we're going to be talking about physical transformation. Now, I do have uh, our life verse or our theme verse for this series is Romans 12.2. It kind of runs throughout this entire series. Romans 12.2 is a verse I want to encourage you to memorize. It says, do not be conformed or don't copy the behaviors and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. The whole idea behind this series is that you and I have got to be open to allowing God to change us into a new person by transforming the way that we think. 
Today we kick off the week talking about transforming our lives physically, and I want to welcome our Parker campus who is joining us online today. In fact, I want to welcome everybody that is there watching with us across the United States and around the world. We're glad that you are there with us. If you have your Bible or Bible app, you can turn to Psalm 23, 1 through 6, and if you did not bring a Bible, you can feel free to use one of the Bibles located underneath the seat in front of you here at our Sweetwater campus and at our Parker campus. Us, feel free to jump up, go to the back of the room, grab a Bible that is there in the middle of the room on a table. If you don't have a Bible or one that you can read or understand easily, I encourage you to take one of our Bibles home with you, read it and apply it to your life. We really believe that if we read God's word and apply God's word, he will change our lives. And that's about transformation. Now, if you haven't noticed, as we talk about physical transformation, I am not what one would call a physical specimen. I've got, I, I've been told I'm a level kind of guy because the bubble's in the middle. That's like an old school pastor joke. So perhaps at one time I was close to being a physical specimen when I worked construction, uh, but I am no, certainly no Natalie. So today we're going to focus on a physical transformation uh, by discussing stress, stress. Did you know that 77% of Americans struggle with stress and that stress impacts our physical health? Stress can cause low energy, headaches, upset stomach, diarrhea, constipation, nauseousness. Stress can cause aches and pains and test muscles. Uh, ch uh, stress can cause chest pain, rapid heartbeat. Chest, uh, stress can cause insomnia, frequent colds, infections. Also, loss of sexual desire and or ability. So raise your hand if you've had a loss of sex. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Nervousness, shaking, ringing in the ear, cold, sweaty hands and feet, dry mouth, difficulty swallowing. This list sounds like a disclaimer from a pharmaceutical company. <laughs> and stress can cause all of those things in our lives physically. And if left unchecked, stress can cause heart disease, high blood pressure, abnormal heart rhythms, heart attacks, and stroke. Stress can kill you if it's left unchecked. Now, don't get stressed out about having stress. I don't want anybody dropping on the floor in the middle of this message. Okay, we're gonna talk about stress and God's remedy for our lives on how to deal with stress biblically. So if you are today a little bit tired, if you're a little bit worn down, if you're a little stressed out, you picked a great week to come to church because we're gonna do everything we can to help you. We're gonna look at the most famous Psalms in the Bible, Psalm 23. Now David was a shepherd boy who wrote Psalm 23 and God had chose David to be king over all of Israel. But there was a problem. Saul was already king over Israel. And when Saul heard that God had rejected himself as the king and chose David to become the new king, he set out to destroy David's life and kill him. He hunted uh, David for years. So David spent many years running from King Saul and his armies. So if there was anybody that was stressed out, it would have been David. But in Psalm 23, we can find God's prescription on how we can live with less stress in our lives. Psalm 23, one through six says this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. To control stress in my life, 
the very first thing that I need to do is to look to God to meet all my needs. Look to God to meet all my needs. Now that may come as a news flash for you. I'm a pastor, I'm a follower of Jesus. We're inside church. It even sounds like a churchy thing to say, yet for many followers of Jesus, they don't really look to God to meet all their needs. Instead, they oftentimes look to family, they look to friends to meet their needs. They look to their spouse to meet their needs, their children. Uh, they want their spouse to make them happy and they experience happiness when their needs are met. But when their spouse dies or they go through a divorce or they lose their job, they wind up asking themselves, who is going to make me happy now? Who can I, who can I trust with my needs now? We should never put our security in anything that is temporary, uh, anything that can be taken from us. We should always find our security in something that should never be taken from us. That's what real security is, isn't it? If we place our security and our hope in something that cannot pass away, then that sounds like a wise decision. The Apostle Paul wrote this in Romans 8, 32. He said, since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? See, God loved you enough to send Jesus to die on the cross and pay the penalty for your sins. And he loves you enough, according to Romans 8, 32, to take care of every need that you have in your life. And there's no one that could possibly meet all of my emotional needs, my physical needs, my spiritual needs, my mental needs, but God can. And if I want to reduce stress in my life, I must look to God. I must look to him to provide all my needs. And so should you. Every time you get stressed out, pause and say, the Lord is my shepherd, I have no needs. The Lord is my shepherd, he will take care of everything I need. And when you get stressed out and you get overwhelmed, just simply repeat that over and over and over again. And once you've made that as a declaration, that, that faith declaration, once you've said that, once you've believed it, you've laid it as a foundation for your life going forward, then you can go on to the next step that we see in verse two, three, and five, that we go to God for guidance, rest, and our defense. We go to God for our guidance, rest, and our defense. See, the reason why we go to God for guidance is because a common source of stress in our lives is caused by indecision. It's caused by indecision. Maybe you're at a fork in the road today. Maybe you've got multiple options and you just can't decide and the stress is killing you. You're wavering back and forth. Maybe I should do this, maybe I should do that. I don't know and so you don't make a decision. You can't decide whether to get in or to get out and you have too many choices. Raise your hand if you struggle with indecision in your life. See, some of you even did this. I do, well, I don't really. I guess I could probably do. That's indecision. So make God your go-to source for guidance, not the opinion of your friends, not the talking heads on television. Go to God for guidance because you can know this, God will always tell you the truth. And you might not like it, but God will always tell you the truth. And when I need guidance, I go to God and the first thing I do is I pray for wisdom. I ask God, would you please give me wisdom about this decision that I've got to make? And then I pray some more and I read God's word and I pray and I wait and I wait. And sometimes God will give me this idea. He'll suddenly give me this light bulb will go on, my head, go on in my head of what I need to do. And sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it doesn't happen immediately. 
And if you are a follower of Jesus, if you've had a moment where you understood that you're a sinner, that there's a punishment for your sin, that Jesus paid the penalty for, the, uh, for your sins on the cross, if you have humbled yourself, if you've surrendered your life to Jesus and you've received Christ as your savior, then God wants to give you guidance. He has not abandoned you. He has not left you alone to figure this world out. He wants to speak to you. He wants to give you guidance. He wants to give you advice. He wants to talk to you. He wants you to stop going to the horoscope and reading it and trying to live your life based on what the horoscope says to do. He wants you to watch your you watch your uh, life change and be transformed as you listen to him. And as you go to God for guidance, you are going to experience the stress in your life begin to melt away. And when the stress begins to melt away from your life, then you're going to be able to rest. Psalm 23, 2, David says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Did you know that getting enough sleep in your life is essential to managing stress? That actually God created us to rest. God created us to sleep. God didn't create us to go 100 miles an hour and work 24 hours a day. God actually designed the human body to rest. I want you to write this down in your notes. My best requires rest. My, to be the best person you can be, you need to be a rested person. Now understand this, you're not wasting time when you're relaxing. You're not wasting time when you're resting. You are recharging your body. You are recharging your body physically and spiritually and emotionally. You are recharging your body when you rest and when you relax. And you might be one of those people that feel guilty when you rest. You feel guilty when you relax. You feel like there's always something that you ought to be doing. Can I tell you? You need to rest. You need to chill out. If resting causes you to stress, something's wrong. Rest. Take that time and relax. You know, Jesus often did as well. When Jesus would have an intense period of ministry, then he would go off maybe sometimes with the disciples and sometimes by himself and just get away and rest. And by the way, if you're not getting enough sleep, parents, you're going to be mean to your kids. If you're not getting enough rest, you're going to be mean to your kids. I don't care what age they are, whether they're toddlers or whether they're teenagers or in college, if you aren't resting, you're gonna get snappy and mean. You're gonna snap at your spouse. You're gonna snap at strangers. You're gonna yell at people who cut you off in the street. So take time to rest because nobody likes mean you. We want you to become the very best person that you can be and your best requires rest. So go to God for guidance, go to him for rest and let him be your defender. Raise your hand if you believe that the world is getting ruder and ruder. <laughs> we all do. So how do you handle rude people? How do we respond to rude people? How do we respond to people who are mean, who are insensitive, who are critical of us, who yell at us? How do we respond? Well, we don't. We let God be our defender. We let God handle them. And David was a pro at this. David spent much of his life running from Saul, who was out to kill him. He wasn't just criticizing David. He wanted to literally cut off David's head and hold it up in victory to tell the Israelites, uh, I am your king. David is not. He hid in caves. Saul and his legions spread lies and rumors about David. He was criticized constantly. Yet David never said one bad word about Saul. He never, he never said one bad word about the man that was trying to kill him. In fact, in verse five, David used a metaphor to describe what it was like for God to be his defender. In Psalm 23, five, David said, 
You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. I love that metaphor because David is actually saying something like while he's being surrounded by all the mean people, by all the people that want to kill him to take his life, he's surrounded by the people who want to destroy him. God's so much of his, def- of his defender that he actually spreads a picnic blanket out in front of him and says, David, while these people are surrounding you, while you are surrounded by your enemies, why don't you take a, take a minute to relax? Why don't you take a moment and eat from the food that I provided for you? Why don't you take a moment and enjoy all these delicacies? What an incredible metaphor for David to be able to say, he is my defender. That in the midst of criticism, in the midst of being hunted down, he was still able to relax, to let down his guard and to enjoy life because he knew his God was his defender. David could eat delicious food while his enemies hunted him down. So let that metaphor stick in your mind. Relax the next time you're criticized. Relax the next time you have an enemy coming at you and let God be your defender. And another way to control stress in life is to trust God in the dark valleys of life. To trust God in the dark valleys of life. Well, I would say this, 2020 and 2021 have brought plenty of reasons to be stressed out in life. Would you agree with me? See, some have not been able to attend a funeral for a loved one in person. Instead, they had to watch live stream because of COVID. That's a huge stress factor. I can't attend the funeral of my loved one. I've got to watch it online. In 2020, parents became their child's primary educator. That's stressful. That's crazy. I'm having to look at math problems that teachers said I would always have to use these formulas in life. And I've never used them since seventh grade. I have no clue what I'm talking about. My girls have stopped asking me for help. (laughs) They have, even... Even my youngest, who's eight years old. (laughs) People have been laid off. That's caused stress. Businesses have been closed for for questionable lengths of time. That has caused great stress. We don't know whether we should take a vaccine or not. That creates stress. On every cable news channel, everybody's pointing fingers at one another and everybody's yelling. And then we have the president of the United States being censored and removed from Facebook and Twitter and other social media, uh, other social media sites. That causes stress. We're encouraged not to be with our family over Christmas and Thanksgiving. And then of course, the recent riot at the Capitol. But here's what David writes And verse four, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. See, David says, I am not going to stress out because God is my protector. God is helping me. And I'm going to trust God in these dark valleys, even though I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Some of you, 2020 and 2021, maybe you're walking through a valley of a shadow right now. It may be the valley of a shadow of debt that you're just overwhelmed. It may be the valley of the the shadow of death. You've experienced a loved one's loss and your heart is aching. It may be the valley of the shadow of conflict or the shadow of depression or the valley of the shadow of discouragement. I can tell you this, shadows are scary. 
I remember being a child and waking up in the middle of the night, looking at this shadow that I would see and knowing for sure it wasn't a shadow, it was a monster and it was about to eat me, beginning with my toes all the way up, going slowly. Do you ever have a shadow that you were afraid of when you were a child, when you were sleeping? See, most of us did, but guess what? We learn this when we grow up. Shadows can't hurt us. Shadows can't hurt us. An airplane can fall out of the sky and land on your head and kill you. But if the shadow of an airplane flying over you goes over you, it doesn't hurt you one bit. Why? Because there is no power in a shadow. Shadows can't hurt and I've been thinking about this as I think about this in relation to COVID-19, as I think about this in relation to the election. It's possible that living in fear of the shadow of COVID-19 is actually worse than the disease itself. It's actually possible that living in fear of what happened in November with the election about who our new president and vice president is, is actually, the fear of that is actually going to be worse than what will actually happen. There's all kinds of things that can generate fear and worry in our lives and the talking heads on television love to get a spark out of us. They love to get a rise out of us. They love to generate fear and worry. But understand, fear and worry are only going to lead to stress in your lives. And stress in your lives caused by fear is not needed and unnecessary because you know the God who holds you in your hand. So none of us know the future. So let's not allow fear of the unknown to create more stress in our lives. None of us know what's gonna happen in March, April, February, whatever, I messed up the months. See, I told you my daughters don't want me to help them. <laughs> but make a decision that you will trust God in the dark valleys anyway. Trust God when you walk in darkness. Trust God when you cannot see. He is there to give you and I guidance, rest, defense, and he will walk with us through those dark valleys. And since he's there for me, I can expect God to finish what he began in me. I can expect God to finish what he began in me. I expect God to finish this work of salvation that he started in me. Let me ask you a question. Are you a what ifer? Are you one of those people that are afraid of the future? What if this happens? What if this went wrong? What if that went bad? What if this, what if that, what if this occurs? And if you are a what if -er, know and understand that is going to lead again to a lot of unnecessary stress in your life. And it's unfortunate because you are creating that stress in your life. It's not coming from an external force. It's being generated by you saying, what if, what if, what if, what if I get COVID? Uh, what if uh, 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 the next presidential uh, people, what if they actually enact the policies that people on the right side say they will? Or, or what if they enact the policies that people say on the left side they will? What if, what if, oh, it's the end of the country. I heard a very, very funny joke from a friend in our life group. And the joke was this, what if, wait, I'm gonna say it wrong. What happens to America when Donald Trump and Joe Biden are abandoned on an island out in the middle of the ocean? Nothing, They're gonna be just fine. Why? Because God is the one who holds our future. And the work that God has begun in your lives, he's going to carry it out to completion. Look at what David said in Psalm 23, 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. See, you can look at your future in one of two ways. 
You can say, what if everything goes wrong? What if I don't have enough money? What if I lose my job? What if somebody walks out on me? What if, what if, what if, what if? Or you can look at your future and you can say, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. See, those are your two options. You can either see from God's perspective or you can see from your own fearful anxiety. What are you going to choose? If you choose to see from God's perspective, you are going to begin to manage the stress that's in your life. And physically, you're gonna feel a whole lot better. Those headaches are gonna go away. The rapid heartbeats are gonna go away. The anxiety buildup, the panic attacks are going to go away. See, even if everything goes wrong in 2021, I'm still going to heaven. Even if everything goes wrong, I still have a God who gave up his life through Jesus so that I could be forgiven for my sins and have a right relationship with him. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What about you? If you're an individual that has not yet trusted and received Jesus as your savior, but today you decide that you want to. Our prayer team is gonna be here at the close of the service and they would love to help you discover that right relationship with God through prayer. They can help you discover what it means to know Jesus personally and to experience forgiveness of your sins. Now, as followers of Jesus, we should be setting the example to the world for how to deal with the stressful world that we're living in. Uh, don't backbite against other people. Don't hide online and lob attacks. Deal with stress by letting God live through you and by allowing God to be your defender. Go to him for guidance, go to him for rest, Let him be your defender. Walk with him through the dark valleys and trust in him. Let's pray together. Father, we we want to acknowledge that some are walking through darker valleys than others. Some have experienced so much loss in their lives And Father, we want to ask that you would wrap your arms around them, that you would comfort them, that you would protect them, and that they would experience you leading them, equipping them, strengthening them. And Father, we want to acknowledge that it's been stressful. Even 2021 so far has been crazy, but you are our God, and you are still on your throne, and we trust you. Lord, help us to be a people that demonstrate we really believe you're in control. Help us to walk with you and become the people of God that you've created us to be. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.